Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the RX480 GTR Black Edition from XFX. Uh, XFX sent me this card, it's mine to keep, so that's your full disclosure out of the way. And, you know, it's a, it's a very nice GPU. Um, I requested it specifically because I love the PCB on it, and because it's super easy to Volt Mod. So I will be doing that, but right now let's just take a look at the card as it comes out of the box. So, speaking of the box, uh, with the card you will also get this 8-pin to 6-pin adapter. Uh, this is relatively safe to use as long as you know that your power supply can actually, you know, supply that much power. Um, because two 6-pins to, like, a 6-pin and an 8-pin really don't differ that much, and two 6-pins to one 8-pin conversion is... Like, this is safe. If your power supply comes with two 6-pins but doesn't have an 8-pin, it can still definitely provide enough power for a single 8-pin, so I think this is fine to include. Um, if it, this was something like a Molex to 8-pin, yeah, don't use those. Those are awful. Um, great way to set your house on fire. Uh, or your PC if you're there and catch it before it burns your house down. So, let's take a look at the card. First things first, on the front you get two 90mm fans cooling the two fin stacks that you have in the heatsink. Both of these fans are removable very, very easily, like you don't need to tear the whole card down to pull these out. So you have these two clips on the sides, you push those in, and the fan comes right out. Uh, right now XFX is basically using this as a, well, one, it makes cleaning the heatsink a hell of a lot easier. Since you don't have to disassemble the whole card, you just, you know, pull out the fan and you can get some cleaning done this way. Uh, however, mostly XFX is using this as an aesthetic uh, thing. So you can buy white LED, red LED, and blue LED fans to put in place of these black ones that the car card comes with, uh, you know, stock, basically. Um, I think it'd be nice if XFX also offered a thicker fan option, because these are 10 millimeters thick. Uh, if they offered a 20 millimeter thick fan, which would get you, you know, extra airflow for any given uh, fan speed. So, you know, at two, 2,000 RPM, uh, a 20 millimeter, th uh, 20 millimeter fan will push more air than a 2,000 RPM 10 millimeter fan. So you'll actually get more airflow without as much noise. So I think it would be nice if they offered some thicker fans as a performance upgrade for the cooling system. However, as of right now, it's mostly just an aesthetic thing and a nice uh, feature when you want to clean the card out. Uh, also, if they did offer, you know, the 20 millimeter fan, uh, 20 millimeter thick fans for the card, it would completely ruin the card's two slot, you know. Right now, this is a two slot card, so you can take four of these and make a GPU sandwich out of them. A very hot, loud GPU sandwich, but you can totally do it. Uh, if they offered 20 millimeter fans, then it wouldn't really be doable any longer. But for a single or dual card setup, I think that would be a really nice option to have. Uh, so maybe we'll see that in the future, I don't know. I don't think they'll take my opinion that seriously. This is, after all, the very first card they've sent me. But if they do, you know, if anybody from XFX watches this, I'd, you know, appreciate it if they at least considered that option. So, with the fans out of the way, well, one fan out of the way, let's take a look at the actual fin stacks. So, there's two fin stacks in the heatsink. Uh, you have one right over the core, and you have another one right here. So, this one cools the core and the VRM. So, you can sort of see there's an aluminum plate right at the bottom of this area. That hooks the MOSFETs of the VRM into this fin stack. Well, into basically these fins. It doesn't actually hook into the rest of the fin stack. So, yeah. That gives uh, some cooling to the VRM. The core hooks into the fin stack directly right, right here. It also has a heat pipe coming from the core uh, into the fin stack over there. So that's basically how heat gets from the core into this fin stack. The other fin stack is connected by three, uh, you know, copper six millimeter heat pipes. This one's also a six millimeter. All of them are six millimeters. So this fin stack is also hooked into the core with. Uh, three heat pipes. Uh, this one does not cool anything uh, directly. Uh, it does, however, push airflow down onto the PCB, and that cools some of the components in the in this area, which would be things like the memory voltage and auxiliary voltage VRMs, which are located under the under this fin stack. So those get airflow for cooling. Um, 
So yeah, that's that's the main heat sink. Uh, for the VRAM, there is an aluminum plate right here. You can sort of see it. And that cools the VRAM. And actually, you'll see that better once I tear the card down. So, yeah. Um, I think I said that this, if I didn't mention it, this right here lights up. Um, you get your BIOS switch right here. Let's see, can I get the light there? There's your BIOS switch. And you get the one 8-pin connector for the whole card. So, with all of that out of the way, let's flip it over and take it apart and take a look at the card naked. Uh, and I'll need to put something under it because that heat sink's going to pop off. Um, give me a second. Hmm. How am I this? Ah, oh, there we go. Perfect. I'm just doing this because the there's a bit of clearance on the... Well, there's a bit of clearance on the, this here. So that's like two millimeters, and I don't want the heat sink falling off of that. So I want the heat sink sitting flat. So to take the card apart, very, very simple. You have four screws on the GPU core and two screws over the V-Core VRM. That'll pull the top heat sink off. The back plate is accessible once you remove... Well, the screws for the back plate are accessible once you remove the uh, GPU core heat sink. So let's get that out of the way. A few people have asked in my comments uh, whether or not it is possible to use the reference water block on this card. Um, maybe? Maybe. Because these, from basically the distance from this screw hole to that screw hole is the same as the reference card, and the same applies to these two. So these four, basically, these four and these two will align with the existing uh, water blocks for the reference cards, except the reference cards also have two more screws here, which at least the EK water block uses those two more screws here for extra mounting, and I'm not sure if that'll cause any conflicts with the uh, auxiliary and memory VRM located right there, which I think is very likely. So it might fit, but it's definitely not guaranteed. Um, and I'm not sure how, how you would go about testing that. I'll see if I can find any detailed dimension uh, dimension specifications for the EK water block and then you know measure the PCB and see if you could in theory mount it on here um, but other than that I personally think putting a full cover water block on any RX 480 is just a complete waste of time and money um, what I would do however is use like a universal GPU water block if you want that extra cooling performance or, you know, just want a quieter running card because obviously with water cooling you can give, you know, you can run three fans at much lower RPM. So, that's the card coming apart. There we go. So, yeah, there you go. That's the PCB. As you can clearly see, there's that aluminum plate covering the VRAM chips. So, that helps uh, give them a bit more surface area through which to get cooled. V-Core VRM is located right over here. You can see the XFX branded uh, chokes right there. There's ca your capacitor bank. They've gone a little bit low on the uh, multi-layer ceramics. There's a lot of those mi missing over there, but that doesn't really seem to, like, the card clocks fine, so I guess that doesn't really affect the card's performance. Uh, the thermal paste, I have replaced the thermal paste once already. Uh, b when I was practicing for this video, so, yeah. Um, so that might actually screw with my thermal testing results because I've tested with different thermal paste once already, so, yeah. Uh, either way, the, like, the thermal paste that the card came with, it looked like it was applied fine. It didn't look like any major disaster of, um, like, there was enough thermal paste, basically, which you almost always get, and it didn't look like it was too thick or to uh, like concrete -y. Some of the manufacturers really use a thermal paste where it's like, this is, this is concrete. Um, th this seemed like a completely fine th thermal compound to me. So I'm not sure if, uh, if my thermal, you know, if me replacing it with Arctic MX2, which is relatively budget thermal paste, would have any impact on the thermal testing. So, yeah, that's the PCB right there. Um, let's pull off the remaining heat sink. So this is going to be fun. So the VRAM, obviously, this aluminum plate, you do need the back plate to have that mounted because that is mounted to 
to the backplate. So basically, if you get a universal water block, that'll be a bit of an issue if you want good VRAM cooling. Though, generally, the VRAM used on most RX480s isn't particularly temperature sensitive going up. It is really temperature sensitive going down. Or at least that's what, ha you know, that's what I seem to have, uh, well, that's pretty much what I saw on my reference card. Uh, it would obviously be nice to see how other RX480s behave, but the reference card, at least, it was a case of warm VRAM clocked fine. Cold VRAM clocked, like, t like really badly. This is not wanting to come off. Damn, those thermal pads are sticky. Okay, you can actually probably get away with just leaving this on there with the thermal pads because these are sticky as hell. So there you get the thermal pads. These are not overly thick by any stretch of the imagination. They seem to be one millimeter or I don't think that's half a millimeter. That looks like one millimeter. So that looks like one millimeter thermal pads. That's fine. Um, a lot better than what they actually use on the VRM. The VRM is using a three millimeter or two millimeter thermal pad. So um, that's not great, but it's better than no cooling on the VRM at all. So yeah. So that's the card basically naked at this point. Uh, let's keep going, pull off a few more screws and, and expose the back of it to see if there's anything important on the other side. I doubt it. I really, really doubt there's anything important because we can already see that there's your V-Core controller. There's your 0.95 volt with its controller. There's your uh, auxiliary and memory, and I'm still not sure which one's which. I'll have to figure that out with a, well, I'll basically measure it with a multimeter. So I'll put the card back together um, without the back plate and basically just stab the card while it's running and figure out which of these puts out 1.5 volts. And whichever one puts out 1.5 volts is the one feeding the GDDR5 chips. So. Also, I'll be able to now, you know, do the check on where the 8-pin is actually hooked into, and we can actually do that right now, probably, now that I have the back plate off. So, yeah, the back of the card is pretty barren. There's not really much there. Um, basically, I have nothing right there. And then the V-Core VRM is nothing special either. So let's check how that V-Core VRM is wired. Let me just get the digital multimeter. And we'll know right away what XFX opted for here. So, go set it to resistance. Hopefully you can see that so that I'm not lying to you about whatever it reads. So, first things first, I've managed to forget which one, which, well, XFX uses the, uh, they flip the 8-pin, and I'm not sure which. I'll just have to check ground again. That's nothing. So let's see which of these is ground. And I suspect ground is going to be the outer one. Okay, that's not ground at all. Also, this soldering is really... Actually, let's do it from this side. It'll be a better way to check. See, now I'll use a screw hole. Well, the thing about... Okay, that's three. And that's an I zero, so that's ground. Okay, that's nice. So this this top one is 12 volts, and that means on the back we have 12 volts from here, from this bottom row. That means I need to measure 12 volts to these, and I'll first check where those capacitors have ground. Okay, that's... Oh, I'm lucky. I nailed 12 volts right off the bat. So let's see. That is not hooked into see this one. So we have that capacitor bank is hooked straight to 12 volts from the 8 pin. Oh, oh. Okay, and this capacitor, now nope, that's not on the 8 pin. This one's also not on the 8 pin. That one's also not on the 8 pin. So it looks like XFX is reusing most of the reference RX480. Um, PCB design in that half of this VRM runs off of your PCIe right there. Um, I'll check if these two, if either of these two is also on the PCIe, because at least that would sort of unload the 12 volts from the PCI. So, 
yeah, that A pin is not actually fueling 100% of the V core if you were hoping for that. So let's see, I'll measure it against this one. Yep, okay, that seems to be... Okay, that's zero. Well, 0 0.1, but this one is also zero. Well, that's nice. I'll just check one last time that it really is 12 volts. So against this one, that's ground actually. That's, yeah, okay, so that's really... Yep. Now let me just check that I'm not wrong. Yeah, okay. So, memory and uh, auxiliary, both on the 8-pin. Half of the V-Core VRM is also on the 8-pin. The other half of the V-Core VRM is on the PCIe right here. So, if you're worried about overloading your PCIe slot, uh, this card is technically capable of that. Um, not that I've actually seen a case of... Like, my reference card didn't blow up my PCIe slot. The, I've never seen a case of a reference card blowing up a PCIe slot. So, I don't think it's anything worth worrying about, but, you know, if you want to, want, if you care about that, yeah, this card, that 8-pin does not fuel that V-Core VRM. Personally, if I was designing an RX 480, this would feed the entire V-Core, and these two would be hanging off of the PCI, because these two are really low power. These are, like, 50 watts combined, whereas this starts at around 100 on the, like, it starts, stock clocks, this will be pu pushing out around 100 watts, um, overclocked, you can get that to push as much as 200, at which point that, that right there will, you know, you'll be going out of spec on this end. So, yeah, um, that's not great, uh, to say the least. Um, so yeah, I'm not, like, I personally don't care, but it's, it's a thing, so if, if you care about that, you know, now you know. Um, and good for you. <laughs> so yeah, this is the GTR in all its naked glory. And thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Please consider donating to my Patreon, which you'll find a d d link down in the description below. Or buy an AHOC shirt. So those both help out with the channel so that I can do more, uh, more content. Um, thankfully, XFX sent this card, so I didn't have to buy it, so we're lucky there, but, you know, for LN2 and stuff, I'd like to be able to fund that, uh, from, entirely from channel funds, which would be, like, Patreon and the shirts. So, yeah, um, that's that for this video, and see you guys next time, and where is the mouse? There's the mouse. Yep, so, goodbye. <laughs>